April 1912 marked one of the most terrible tragedies in the history of the world. The most unsinkable vessel, the pinnacle of engineering at that time, the huge Titanic, sank. On that dark, moonless night, the ship had many chances to save its passengers. There was another ship just a few miles away that could have saved the Titanic, but it didn't. It wasn't a phantom ship, and it's not some legend or a theory. This is a documented reality. There are records and witnesses' statements confirming this, but why didn't this ship help? Let's find out what happened that night by looking at these events from three different points of view. Let's start with the Titanic version. 11.30 p.m. The moon hides behind black clouds. Visibility is bad. Everything is calm on the Titanic. Under the captain's guidance, the communications operator stays in touch with the mainland through the radio. At this moment, some stranger breaks into the frequency, interrupting the operator's communication. It's unclear what this strange man wants and what he's talking about. The operator doesn't try to figure it out. He shouts at the guy, demanding him to disconnect. The connection is interrupted. At 11.40 p.m., the Titanic crashes into an iceberg. The ice breaks the hull. Water begins to flood the lower decks. Nobody is panicking yet. 20 minutes later, at midnight, the ship's crew sends a distress signal through the radio frequency. Few people understand how bad the situation really is. After 20 minutes, at 12.20 a.m., they start lowering lifeboats with passengers. At 12.25 a.m., they receive a response to the distress signal. This is RMS Carpathia. Their captain reports they're already sailing at maximum speed towards the Titanic. But the problem is that the crash site is 58 miles away. This means Carpathia will only be here in four hours. At 12.45 a.m., the sinking ship's crew release rockets into the air. These flares are one of the main reasons for the terrible fate of many passengers, but more on that later. 90 minutes later, the Titanic's deck breaks and the ship dives underwater. At 4.10 a.m., the Carpathia finally arrives at the shipwreck location. The crew members make heroic efforts to save all the people. They take 705 survivors on board. At this moment, another ship appears. It's SS Californian. The Carpathia sails towards the New York coast with all the people. The Californian floats in search of passengers and finds nothing but wreckage. The ship was only a few miles away while the Titanic sank into the icy water. The Californian could have saved these people, but did nothing. Its captain, Stanley Lord, made one of the most terrible acts that a sailor can allow. He didn't help a sinking ship. When the world found out about all this, they detested Captain Lord. They couldn't bring charges against him, and the trial didn't punish him. But his career was ruined entirely, as no other ship company would hire him. Despite this, he never confessed he had been guilty. Before he passed away, the captain said it hadn't been his fault. If this was true, then what happened there? This brings us to the Californian version. It's the night of April 14th. The Californian is sailing in the cold waters of the North Atlantic. The ship gets into a section with a lot of icebergs. At 10.10 p.m., Captain Lord stops the ship. It's too dangerous to move around this area, as they can damage the hull. At 11 p.m., the ship starts drifting. It's impossible to move in such conditions with such poor visibility. The captain knows that the Titanic is coming here, so he orders the radio operator to warn the ship about the danger. Radio operator Evans turns on the receiver and tries to contact the Titanic. He spends about 30 minutes on it. The connection is finally established. At this moment, the Titanic radio operator is speaking with the mainland. Evans interrupts this conversation and tries to warn the ship about icebergs. The operator doesn't understand Evans' words. He's annoyed because Evans broke into the channel so brazenly. He shouts at Evans and cuts the connection. Tired, Evans turns off the receiver and informs his superiors about the incident. It's still a mystery how the captain reacted to this news. He probably thought the Titanic knew about the danger. He lets Evans go to bed. If Evans hadn't turned off the radio and waited one hour, he would have heard a distress signal from the Titanic. But you shouldn't blame him. At this point, 
he has no official reason to stay at the transmitter. Evans is too exhausted and can't fight drowsiness. So, Evans goes to bed. The Titanic begins to sink. Its captain sends a distress signal. The operator on board the Carpathia catches it, but the Californian doesn't, since the receiver is turned off. Captain Lord can't sleep. He feels that something is wrong. Meanwhile, the Titanic is rapidly sinking under the water. The captain gives the order to launch rockets into the air. And here is where one of the critical mistakes takes place. They release warning lights, but they are not red. The crew forgot to take red rockets on board for some reason, so they lit up the sky with a bright white light. If you need to send a distress signal, you need to release red lights. Captain Lord sees these lights, but doesn't perceive them as a cry for help. It can't be that there are no standard red rockets on such a massive ship as the Titanic, but unfortunately, it can. Captain Lord thinks the Titanic is sailing away. Perhaps there is some unknown reason behind those white lights, but he doesn't really know. So, Captain Lord has no idea that the Titanic is sinking. He still decides to contact the ship, but this time, not through radio communication. Captain Lord doesn't wake up the radio operator and sends a signal to the Titanic through a signal lamp. It's important to understand that many old-school captains didn't take radio communication seriously. They didn't understand the value of this technology. That's why Captain Lord doesn't wake up Evans. He sends light signals, but the Titanic doesn't respond. Many survivors later mentioned seeing the flashing lights of the Californian, but there was nothing they could have done. The ship's crew doesn't hear their cries for help. At 2.20 a.m., the Titanic completely goes underwater. A little more than two hours later, radio operator Evans wakes up and turns the transmitter on. He hears many rescuers talking about the sunken ship. Evans understands everything. He reports this to the captain. At that moment, the Californian immediately heads to the wreck site. They meet Carpathia there. With the survivors on board, it sails towards New York. The Californian stays sailing and looking for people. They find nothing but wreckage. The Californian returns to the mainland. The news about the ship that could have saved the Titanic is spreading all over the country. The trial begins. Captain Stanley Lord and the crew tell their version. They say their ship had been standing still. Many people don't believe them, and some of the surviving passengers claim to have seen the Californian sailing by. Still, the judge declares them innocent. 1962. Captain Stanley Lord is a very old man. He calls a notary to confess something. The captain makes his last remark about this case. He swears he's not guilty. But if it wasn't the Californian sailing past the Titanic at that moment, then what? The Samson theory could answer that question for us. The sealing ship Samson is sailing in the cold waters of the North Atlantic. The crew aren't sleeping. They carefully study the surroundings, but not because they're afraid of icebergs. They're scared of meeting with the U.S. Coast Guard. The Samson ship's crew catch seals, which is illegal. At 12.45 a.m., Samson's captain sees white signal rockets. The team is sure it's the Coast Guard. They turn off the lights and sail away. It's dark, so they don't notice the sinking Titanic. They return to the coast of Iceland and hear about the disaster. They realize they have abandoned the drowning passengers. The nephew of one of Samson's crew members reads about this story in his uncle's diary. The nephew asks for permission to publish these recordings. All the people realize that Captain Lord wasn't guilty. But unfortunately, he didn't live to see this moment. Actually, it's still unknown who is guilty in this story. Two ships were nearby the Titanic. Their captains were adequate people. They would have helped save all the passengers. Their fault was that they couldn't understand what the Titanic wanted on that dark night. Someone forgot to put red flares in the box. This small but fatal detail was one of the leading causes of the tragedy.